so this one I wanted to bring up because I wanted to bring to the attention of this audience um, a question that was written in about your book, Mars, Venus on a Date, which by the way, John, I recommend to my coaching clients. And one of my coaching clients, we were having a um, conversation the other day and she said, oh, she said, these five stages that John talks about, these stages of dating that John talks about in this book, she said, this gave me so much this has given me so much clarity so so here's a related question from monica she says hi john thanks for taking our questions in your book mars venus on a date you talk about the stages of dating and i'm wondering if this is something to discuss with someone i am dating if that's the first question if a man consciously chooses to move through the stages of uh, through the stages with a woman or if it is something that just naturally happens you know, everybody's a little bit different, you know, it'd be like, you know, some guys are like, hey, let's read this book together and, and check this out. And, and, you know, it's different temperaments like that structure. Uh, in most cases, it's just going to be if a woman reads the book, she's aware of the pitfalls of every stage and how to make sure it's happening and to kind of know where she is as the relationship is unfolding. I think that the more heartfelt we are, the more mature we are, and you can move through those stages very, very quickly because you have a, you already have a sense of who you are. You know, for me, I'll give an example. After 34 years of marriage with Bonnie, uh, you know, I know who I am and I know all my buttons that can be pushed. I know how to let them all go. So for me to start a new relationship, you know, I gave myself a year to grieve and I said, okay, now I'll start a relationship and boom, I found the person. And I don't, I don't have all those doubts and questions because I know who I am. I know what I want. I know just what I want. And I found it right away. I mean, it's just like my friends say, how are you doing? I said, oh, I'm having a great life. And how do you find that? Yes. Well, I'm a relationship expert. You know, I should, <laughs> yeah. if you, if you know who you are, you know, uh, and, and you, you see what happens when our buttons get pushed, we get upset and then we become judgmental or critical or doubtful of others. When you know who you are, you find the right person right away because they will mirror who you are and you love who you are. So you will love them. But that's, you know, I'm, I've been doing this 50 years, almost 70 years old and personal growth is my thing. So it's very easy for me now to do all this stuff only because I've been doing it for so long. So having said that, having said that, uh, what is my what is the, the question here? Remind me of the question. The is question when, is: Are the stages of dating? Is it something to discuss? Oh, is it something natural? Man? Okay, yeah. love at first sight, for example. You know, you might be right when you have love at first sight, and and that can happen. That's just feeling strong attraction, or it's a real soul knowing. Uh, it's not that common, but it can happen. Uh, you know, my kids, Bonnie. I think in our last year that we were talking a lot about our relationship to kids and, and one of my daughters said to Bonnie, did you know that dad was the one when you first right away? And Bonnie said, the first time I saw him, I know he was the one. Really? And, and then they said to me, dad, did you feel that? I said, I said, she's the one I want to have sex with tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's an honest response. <laughs> yes. Actually, I didn't say sex with the kids. I said, she's the one, I, she's the person that I want to spend the night with. <laughs> so that's what I knew. But ironically, even though we had such a beautiful connection right away, we ended up breaking up. And it wasn't until I got married to somebody else, learned a lot of lessons, made a lot of mistakes, did some healing and then came back knowing she was the one. So, and she, she was the one, she still is the one in my heart. So there's this thing we have to recognize that I can share from my own experience is you could be with your soulmate and not know you're with your soulmate because you're not ready for them. You haven't grown enough to recognize the one. You don't love yourself enough to, to actually stay with somebody who truly loves you, who's right for you. Because, you know, not all of our thinking is correct and we're down on ourselves, hard on ourselves, doubting ourselves. So back to the question. I'm just trying to answer questions today. So the, the question is, so do you go through those stages? Mainly you go through them being aware of where you are in the whole thing without trying to explain to where your partner is in the whole thing. But the third stage, first is attraction, then comes doubting, then comes commitment, then comes deeper intimacy. Your stuff comes up and you're able to overcome it. Then comes proposal. 
And then you act as if you're married, but without all the pressures of being married, then you get married. So that's them in short. And every stage has its own challenges. So the one I'll talk about right now that you do need to you know, clearly talk about. The others, you just need to understand and act appropriately rather than make the common mistakes people make. But when it gets the commitment, that's where you need to discuss that I'm not willing uh, to be physically intimate with you until we get to know each other enough to where I know that you're committed to me and you're not going to be having sex with other people if I'm having sex with you. Because you should, in my opinion, it's extremely confusing for a woman Mm -hmm. and not confusing for a man, but subconsciously confusing for him. He doesn't know when he's confused or not, but (laughs) he'll he'll just feel like, I don't know if I want to be with her, you know? And then uh, I don't know what went wrong, you know, what I'm ready to move on. He doesn't, he's just sort of lost in, in the whole thing. Women will often feel confused. You know, they feel like, I, I don't know. Is he right? Is he wrong? Is he wrong? Does he love me? Does he? That's when you want to all talk about the relationship. But there's a place where he wants to have sex with you and you go, you know, I want to have sex with you. But I know for me, you're talking, I'm being the woman here. For me, it just doesn't work for me to have sex if, I, if, if the man I'm having sex with is having sex with anybody else. So I want to feel that as long as we're having sex together, that we have a, a commitment and a promise to each other that then we're not going to have sex with the, with other people. And in the beginning, I still need to go really slow with it. I don't want to have a whole lot of sex. I mean, I want to, but I know that I, I need to have it just occasionally, maybe like once a week where it generally works for me. And, but I also need to feel that you're not having sex with anybody else in between or that you're not having sex with yourself. Uh, that's really what works for me. I like to feel that the energy is building up. Now, that's pretty bold to say. He may not agree to that, but that's you really want a relationship. That's why I tell women, find a guy who wants you more than you want him, and he'll be willing to play by your rules. Uh, But if you're trying to please a guy, you're going to be afraid to even say something like that. And it really is kind of weird today to say something like that. I'll grant it, but I'm trying to popularize this research that shows that if men have sex, if men ejaculate more than once a week, they lose interest in the woman they're having sex with and are more interested in other women. And that's what causes us to become so confused is we, you know, we start to compare as soon as a man's testosterone levels go down, a woman's estrogen levels go down. That means she's in a little stress state. Whenever we're in stress, we always start comparing and comparing is the thief of our happiness. There's always better on the other side of the fence. You know, if you're feeling stressed, if you're not feeling stressed and you understand that, the grass is greener on the other side of the fence is actually what you become when you're stressed. Then you don't pay much attention to that and you focus on the good that you have. But that takes maturity. And that's why there's stages of this whole thing, because you, before you even get to that level, you have to have deep intimacy where you know yourself and you're able to share yourself with your partner. So that's where your stage four is where your partner triggers you and you have all these uh you know, judgments or disapproval or arguments that come up and you're able to dissipate them very quickly by taking responsibility for going deeper and recognizing how you contribute to problems rather than them being the problem. You are responsible for how you feel. And that's the deep intimacy that you start to experience. You overcome that. Now you wake up one morning and go, he's the one for me because you've connected with your soul through the relationship then you can see if they're your soulmate or not. And sometimes you get to that level of intimacy and they're not the one for you. You love them, but you realize they're not right for you. And that's okay too. How do you know if somebody's right, really right for you as a soulmate? Your heart has to be fully open. So how do you know if somebody's not right for you? Your heart has to be fully open because when your heart's open, it's not like they opened your heart. You opened your heart in relationship to them and were able to know if they're the one that you want to share your life with. They could be the one you want to grow in love with for a while and move on. It, there's no there's no just because you love someone, you have to spend your life with them or they're the right person for you. But if you open your heart, then you know. Knowing is something that comes to us when our heart is open. And it's just no reasons even. There may be reasons that help you open your heart, but knowing is a knowing. Like if I have a cold glass of water, a refreshing glass of water, I know it's cold. It's just a knowing. Well, we all have that capacity when our heart is open. You know, mm-hmm. that, and I know when I, 
I, you know, I have this whole background of being a monk and studying uh, Buddhism and Hinduism and all these different things. There's a phrase in the Vedas, which is a state of awareness, which they call Ritambara Pragya, which is that state of awareness that recognizes truth. And we're not in that state of awareness and we're constantly being pushed out of that awareness if you watch TV. Now, if you watch theater or TV where you know that what you're watching is made up, then that doesn't cause us to start believing lies because we already know it's a lie, it's made up. So that's healthy to do is to have drama that's made up and it's not real. So always in the Greek days, there was laughter and there was drama as part of catharsis, which was uh, healing. We listen to things and we believe them and they're partial truth, they're lies. Anything's a partial truth, it's the sin of omission. Something else is not being expressed. So when you believe what's not true, you go further and further away of knowing within yourself what's true. And we lose that. We watch these lies and believe these lies and act on these lies. And the same thing happens in our relationships. I'll put in here, even though it wasn't the question, <laughs> but in our relationships, when you use negativity to get what you want, you're not connected to your soul. The soul uses love to get what you want. And when you use negativity, basically you're lying because you're not negative. You're a positive being. And it's a, it's a partial truth. It's what you feel, but it's not the complete truth. You know, you can be angry with somebody, go, oh, I'm angry about you. But now I realize that, you know, you didn't mean to say that or you really do care. So I'll let it go. So I care about you. So now you, you've you've gotten to the complete truth, which is, yes, I was angry, but now it's an incomplete belief or feeling. It needs to get back to love. And then it's forgiveness. And that's the, that's the total truth. We want to learn how to get to the real truth of life. And that's by getting to the truth of who we are, which is we're loving human beings, but we do interdepend on each other. We're dependent. We need love. We need support. We need to be loving. Otherwise, we're not being our true self. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was beautifully said. And, you know, coming back just for a second to the five stages in your book, which, by the way, everyone, I really highly recommend um, the stages in your book. When I thought back on this, when my husband and I were dating and one of the distinctions, because I didn't get married till I was 43. So I dated a lot of different people and I, I didn't have the easiest time finding what felt like the right relationship for me, which is part of the reason I do the work that I do, because I'm really passionate about how good that can be when you find the right person um, and how hard it can feel when you don't have the right person. And yeah. so, um, but one of the things I noticed was that with my husband and I, we never discussed, you know, the stages of dating or anything like that, but things just felt like they naturally, gracefully progressed in a way where it didn't feel like there was struggle. It didn't feel like there was drama and it just felt like the relationship just like naturally, it wasn't push me, pull me, one person way into it more than the other, naturally and gracefully evolved. And yet, when I look in the book, I can see, you know, I can see how, yep, that's what was happening then, that's what's happening then. We were naturally and gracefully moving through those stages. And I do think your, uh, your wisdom about some of the pitfalls to watch out for, since a lot of the women are out there dating, is so incredibly valuable. Yeah, so you answered the question better than me, but it, having heard what you just said, it, it, the answer is, I, I came up with those five stages because you can see that people who get married, have good relationships, all went through them. And I can see at the it's a natural unfoldment of the stages of a plant developing, for example, it goes through stages. And it's not like you're saying, okay, now we're going to we're going to force this stage and we're going to force this stage. It's a natural unfoldment of typically what happens when people bond and the bonding grows. At the same time, what I did is said, be aware of what stage you're in. Then you know what your challenges are. You also know what your pitfalls are so that you don't fall into them. Because like in the stage of commitment, often one of the pitfalls there is men have a tendency to say, okay, now that we're having sex, I don't have to work so hard <laughs> to make you love me. And so they, they tend to become a bit more passive and a woman will tend to feel like, oh, he's becoming passive. I should work harder. You know, now that we're in a committed relationship, I'll give more in the relationship. And by giving more, he ends up going further the other direction. So that would be a pitfall in that situation that you wanna look out for. And, and so many people naturally move through them and they're able to overcome those pitfalls and people that don't end up 
happily married or if that's their goal, they don't uh, they don't make it because they hit one of those pitfalls and did made a mistake. And so here's how you can correctly evaluate what's going on at, from some of the, from a wisdom point of view rather than falling into the pitfalls. So I point those out. Thank you so much, John. And thank you so much for your generosity and for being willing to field all of these questions. And you're so generous with your wisdom. And I really love what you've shared because I know that your work is making such an impact in the world. And for this audience, we're really honored and we want to express our gratitude and appreciation for your generosity. It really means a lot. You're very, very welcome. Thank you so much. Thanks for being the ambassador of love. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody.